Hello, this is the NRV, the largest gathering of believers involved in ministration through various forms of media. And GCK is present here in Orlando, Florida, in the United States. It's a great time where we have a new world of great opportunities opening up to enable us to take the gospel of Christ to the last person here on the earth. Join us for an exciting time at NRV 2023. Thank you and God bless you. I'm Steven. And I'm Nate. And we're here representing the GCK and Dr. Kumi at the NRV. And for the uninitiated, the GCK is an evangelistic outreach that was spurned about two years ago. It's a mission that has been going across the globe. And thank God through digital media, we've been able to reach about 180 countries. And me speaking about two years ago, we just remembered that the world was in such a broken state and we, um, we saw that there was need for uh, for revival in the land, for revival across the world. And by God's grace, Dr. Kumi felt this same thing uh, upon his heart and he chose to start the GCK, which reaches millions and millions of people. And by God's grace, you've seen over 500,000 people come to Christ over the last two years. And Nate's here, he's been a participant at the NRB before and he's gonna tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so NRB is just the National Religious Broadcasters. Um, so they feature Christian media, They're, it's kind of the who's who of Christian media. So there's Kayla, there's In Touch Ministries, there's the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. So we're here because we think it's strategic that we, we come here, we make connections um, to be able to continue to partner with these ministries, be able to serve these ministries. I, I think it's just a, a really important thing for us to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Nate. And like I said earlier, the, the main goal is indeed fulfilling the Great Commission, which is to spread the gospel to every creature. God bless you as you continue to watch. We are live here at NRV in Orlando, Florida, United States of America. And I've got here Pastor Hessian. Welcome. And uh, it's good to be with you. Uh, just to share in the wonderful things the Lord has been doing uh, through the Global Crusade with Pastor Kumuyi, and uh, it's been indeed global. Yeah, I've just given you some statistics of what the Lord has done in the past one year. Uh, uh, we've actually had the crusade for two years now, and specifically in the last one year, Global Crusade with Komoye has recorded over 297,881 uh, conversions in terms of clear decisions that we have made for Christ. And that's amazing. And that's one of the things we bring into the NRB to showcase Global Crusade with Komoye to the rest of the world. And of course, see what the Lord will help us to do in terms of partnership. Uh, Pastor SCM, yes. uh, what do you think we are here to achieve at NRB? Well, the, the, uh, the wonderful thing the Lord is doing uh, with the GCK, the Global Crusade with Pastor Kumuyi, uh, is what we are, we are here to get the world to know, to get the rest of the world to come to benefit from it. And uh, it's just, uh, we're just so excited that this is something that uh, America can be blessed with Europe, can be blessed with your family, with Europe. Yeah. And uh, we just trust that the, 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 the fire is going to fall. Amen, amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. And already, by the way, we started having some partnerships here at the NRB. Um, amazing people, wonderful people, ready to work with us. Preaching 
the gospel is not a solo endeavor. There are hundreds of organizations here at NRB, and we are pursuing strategic partnerships with them. Here's Pastor Niran with one of them. Hi, Gerard. Yes, sir. Welcome to our stand, uh, Global Crusade with Kumui. And uh, now tell us about yourself and what you do for ministries, supporting them in the area of technology. Okay. Well, one thing I've, I kind of learned through the years, years ago, a minister told me you have twins. And he said, you have ministry and you have marketplace business, you know? Yeah. So, because ever since I was, you know, in the early you know, school years, early teens, I always had a love for technology. I was taking things apart and putting things back together. And I always had a love for the arts, yep. uh, dancing, singing, acting, all those things. I love all kinds of production. And so I started to learn, wow, you can use this technology and all this, this arts and this stuff that I love for Jesus, for getting the gospel out, to getting the answer, the answer out there. Wonderful. Now, I told you yesterday when we met about the global crusade with Kumui and um, what the Lord has been doing um, all around the world uh, through the crusade by Dr. Kumui. And if you remember, we spoke about how to use technology uh, to expand the yes. work and get so saved, reach out to as many as the Lord wants us to reach out to in terms of expansion of the gospel work. Now, coming from technology perspective, uh, how do you think we can partner together and take this gospel at far and wide? I, I'm really glad you asked that. As I was giving that testimony before of my kind of journey through the, the ministries that God has placed me with, everywhere along the way, technology was always on the front edge. Yep. They were always on the innovative cutting edge of technology. And in 1994, I started a business called Higher Standard Praise Systems. Okay. And it was solely, the main focus was to provide the body of Christ with the needed technology tools. I believe God can use my experience now of over 30 years in technology to help consult ministries to show them, this is the options, this is what you need, this is not what you need. Um, these are the ways that we can get it. And now I have the ability because I am a, in a, what you call a dealer or a manufacturer's distributor okay. of all the equipment just about on the planet so I can save the, the body of Christ money okay. on top of it. Wonderful. So I, I'm glad that um, we met at this um, NRB conference. Me too. And then um, hopefully we'll be working together uh, to see how to take gospel to the rest of the world through technology. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for the honor. Thank you. All right, let's speak about specific content. Okay. All right. Um, there's different ways to look at your content. You've got your ongoing content that you're generating on a regular basis, whether that's yeah. weekly content. You've got your best of messages. So the best of message series that, that bit the pastor has done. So you get the, the best of, and you have his series. Yeah. And so you have the different series that he's done. And so you want to think about what is the first things that you want to start translating? Do you want to translate the ongoing uh, content that's happening on a regular basis? Do you want to do the best messages that he's done and do that in the top 10, top 20, top 50 languages okay. that folks are resonating with you? Or do you want to do some of the message series? That way we can actually fine tune the translations, get the, there's a term called a colloquialism. Okay. And one of the challenges with translations and a lot of mistakes that people make with translations is that uh, if they just use raw translations, the, the colloquialisms get messed up. And so for instance, um, I'm an American, I use American colloquialisms. Okay. Your pastor is Nigerian, he's going to use Nigerian colloquialisms. Yeah. We need a translator who's going to not just look at the, and does he preach primarily in English or Igbo? English. English? Yeah. Okay. So he's preaching in English, but he used the Nigerian colloquialism. Okay. So I need one of my team to go through, listen to the colloquialism, and make sure that that turns into international English before we translate it so it'll translate across the world well. Okay. Otherwise, the colloquialism will be misunderstood, may not translate. I'll use an American one. Okay. Here's an example. Okay. It's raining cats and dogs. Well, cats and dogs translated into Vietnamese would not be right. Okay. Translated into Chinese would not sound right. Yeah. And so you have to fix the colloquialisms in translation before you do the translations. That's one of the, key, the keys that we do. And so we would go through, make sure the content is correct for doing translation, then do the translation, and then come back and proof and review the translation. We make sure that it's correct, that it's accurate, 
Uh, matter of fact, for instance, let's say you have a preferred translated Bible that you'd rather use in Swahili or in Korean. We can okay. actually let you define the Bibles you want. So if you want something more conservative, closer to, similar to the King James in those languages. Okay. We would make sure that in that language, the scriptures not cited will be that language you prefer, okay. not just whatever AI does. Okay. Okay. So we nail it accurately, even from the Bible versus standpoint. Okay. And so therefore you're going to get excellent translation across the board. Okay. That's a little bit of what we do. Hello, I'm Matthew Potter. Founded Thanks for coming by. Yeah, how was your NRB experience today? NRB has been incredible. We had a big presence here. We brought almost our entire team. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of meetings. So everyone, though, I think feels refreshed and fulfilled, uh, even though they're pretty tired as well. Yeah, you guys are doing a great work for the kingdom. Can you share a little bit about with us? Yeah, so Pray.com is the number one app for daily prayer and faith based audio content. We actually just crossed 14 million downloads of the Pray.com app, 1 billion listening minutes of content, and over 100 million shares. And we hit number one in the app store in 125 countries around the world for the lifestyle category, greatly in part to amazing partners and pastors like you. So it's something that we're really passionate about, helping people through content, because we have voracious listeners, we have people seeking all the time the Word of God, and uh, we need amazing and tremendous Bible teachers like Dr. Hamui who can come on the platform and help people. I'm just so excited. Yeah. I think about like this platform so people download the app on their phone yeah. or log into the website yeah. and then they can watch these videos that will impact their life. They can subscribe to all these different channels, yeah. including GCK. Yep. Wow, what a great way to get digital content into the hands of people that might otherwise not have yeah. access to the gospel. And just think of the people that are going to listen, ministry leaders, pastors, people that are wanting to grow their business. Absolutely. You know, the population that we're reaching out to is ginormous and we have a great opportunity. So thank you so much for this yeah, partnership. No problem. You know, thank you for your willingness to come alongside us and help us as we seek to bring the gospel to nations. Well, we're really excited for all that wants to see the Thank you. to have Dr. Kumui on Pray.com. We are so excited to have you on the platform and help reach an amazing audience of people that you're gonna help save people's lives, change people's eternities, and also help people get back into the world. So thank you so much for joining the platform. We're honored and blessed to have you. We're super excited. You have an amazing team of people, and we just love having you on the platform. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to having you. I'm definitely glad to feel great. Thank you so much. And I'm on the international committee of uh, the NRB. And one That's of the, the things... The National Religious Broadcast. As, uh, in the U.S., yes. And uh, Pastor, I want to say thank you. Thank you for what God have used you to do and continue to use you to do. It is people like you that, that keep taking the gospel to our own people in Africa and beyond. May God continue to bless you and the ministry. I just wanted to say thank you for bringing Revival Seed to the U.S. Thank you for the work and the labor of bringing Revival in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm inspired by it. I love it. The, um, the healing the Raising People from the Dead, these stories inspire me and um, encourage me to get on my knees for a revival here in the U.S. Um, we love Israel. We want revival everywhere. We want revival in all the 
everywhere, nations, we want revival everywhere. And it's amazing what is happening in Nigeria. May it, may it flow to all countries and people. Wrapping up here at the NRB National Religious Broadcasters, and we just wanted to thank the staff, the volunteers, everyone who worked so hard to put this whole thing together. Um, whether you're doing admin or logistics or media or whatever you're doing, thank you so much for all your hard work. We also want to thank the NRB um, for their support of us, for their support of all these wonderful, wonderful ministries and organizations um, that work so hard day in and day out to spread the gospel. And finally, we want to thank you, um, our listeners, our viewers. Thank you so much for your support, for your viewership. Um, and just thank you for allowing us to continue to spread the, the mission the, of, of this gospel message. You guys have a great day. Be blessed. For the past few days, we have witnessed the reenactment of great messages by the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. We have witnessed live miracles, including the delivery of a miracle baby on day two by Jesus, the Liberator. All these are a foretaste of what's coming. And now, for the new thing coming, Super Liberation Sunday. At GCK Second Year Celebrations, there will be a super message on Sunday evening. You will hear what you have never heard before as God's servant, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi will be ministering on the power of praising God for his mighty deeds. Tell everyone everywhere to be there, live, physically in your location, and online across the globe. This Sunday service, May 28th, 2023, will be extraordinary. Be there. Don't be told. today what tomorrow may bring what one thing for sure God can do anything and he's in control by his word I am told tell me should I fear God can do anything, anything but fail? Oh, God can do anything, anything but fail, anything by my side.
He spoke to a raven. Feed a man by the brook. And paid a man's taxes. With a fish on a hook. He parted the Red Sea. Amen. Why should I feel God can do anything, anything but fail? God can do anything, do anything, anything but fail, anything but fail. It's in my mind, my soul, my soul, it's a kind of thing. Circumstances that you can get through. But right now it seems there's no other way out, and you are going on down. But God's proven time and time again, He'll please me for you.
celebration continues as we worship and sing with the guest music artist for today. standing in your love today. And we thank you that you are so good to us. It's the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, that we just want to say how great you are. So can we do that together and just sing how great is our God? Let that lift up like an anthem. The splendor of the key clothed in majesty let all 
all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great is our You're the name. You're the name above all names. Come on, let your voice. You are worthy of all praise. In my heart will see how great our God. Oh, you're so great. great is our God. Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness. We rest in you. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. What you did, Lord, back in the past, you will do today, you will do tomorrow. So, God, we need you. In this moment, can you just say that, God, I need you? Praise the Lord. A better hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 12, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father. Tonight, as we celebrate this second anniversary of GCK, I want to assure you, you will witness and experience a fulfillment of this scripture through his servants. This evening, I have the honor and rare privilege of introducing the anointed servant of God, the general superintendent of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry worldwide, and the visionary and convener of GCK, a man whose God's grace has made all the difference. So tonight, I assure you, this scripture that Jesus spoke about, the greater works you are going to experience in your life through this servant. Please, wherever you are, I'd like you to kindly stand to your feet as we welcome to the podium Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuye. You are welcome, sir. Are you there for a miracle? For power manifestation. Tonight is a special night for you. And the Lord will satisfy everyone, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Something great, unprecedented, is coming your way. God will wipe away all your tears. Take away all your sorrow and crush every sickness out of your life. Here and there, tonight, something great is happening. Let me see your hand. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. You are the God that cannot fail. Your power cannot fail. I pray that tonight, Great, wonderful, marvelous things will happen in everyone's life in Jesus' name. Wipe all the tears away. Change everything changeable. Lord, I pray the impossible will be possible tonight. Incredible miracles. Supernatural deliverance coming upon everyone tonight confirm it lord in jesus name we pray i just like to hear your voice again amen god bless you you can sit down tonight we come to matthew chapter 6 and tonight we're looking at verse 10 matthew chapter 6 Verse 10, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. When there is a kingdom, there is a king. And the attributes of the king will pass on to the kingdom. The king, the kingdom of power. The kingdom, the kingdom of power. The king is a king of majesty, and a kingdom is a majestic kingdom. The king is an unfailing king, and a kingdom is a kingdom that cannot fail. The king is the all in all, and a kingdom has all that you need. Tonight, it will satisfy you with all that you need in Jesus' name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Look, look at verse 33 there. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added 
unto you. Great blessings from heaven. Added to your life tonight. Great manifestation of power manifested in your life tonight. In Jesus' name, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things, all things, all these things shall be added unto you. Today, there's addition in your life. You know, sometimes when I say, you want to come to Christ, raise up your hand there. Some people, they don't understand. They think if they raise up their hands, if they give themselves to Christ, that something will be subtracted out of their life. Uh -uh. You missed the point. Addition is coming. Multiplication is coming. When you seek the king, and you seek the kingdom, and you seek the righteousness of the king and of the kingdom, addition of blessing, addition of benefits, addition of goodness, addition of miracle, addition of supernatural wonders, addition of supernatural deliverance will come your way in Jesus' name. Now, there are some people that think all that kind of raise up your hand, believe on the Lord Jesus. They say it's for young people. Uh -uh. You didn't get the point. Everyone that wants addition, addition of blessing, addition of miracle, addition of salvation, addition of the good things of heaven, it's meant for everyone. It's not only children. It's not only teenagers. It's not only middle-aged people. Even the people that are old and old and old. They need addition in their life. And I come to you tonight to invite you to the addition of the kingdom in your life tonight in Jesus' name. You know, some people say, I go to church, I'm a church man, I'm a church woman. And so when I say, if you want the salvation of the Lord, the forgiveness of the Lord, where are you there? Left, right, center, at the back, very quickly, raise up your hand. They you say, I go to church already. Ah, you missed the point. All the people that want addition in their lives. Church man, don't you want addition? Church woman, don't you want addition? Everyone, no matter where you are, and no matter where you are coming from, and no matter the goodness that you have had in the past, I come to you tonight to bring addition of heaven into your life. Somebody help me shout addition. So when the time comes, I will give you a chance that additional blessing, additional glory, additional grace, additional salvation that the Lord will put in your life, that addition will come to you today. And online, French, listen. The time I give the altar call, it's not the time for you to say, because you are in the privacy of your house there, I go to toilet, I go to kitchen, I open the fridge, I want to get something to shop. When addition is about to come, stay there, and the blessing of God will come upon your life. Tonight, I'm talking to you on extraordinary blessings for kingdom citizens. Extraordinary. What's going to happen to you tonight? Extraordinary. What's going to come in your life tonight? Extraordinary. Somebody there help me shout. Extraordinary. Extraordinary blessings for kingdom citizens. There are three points I'm looking at. Number one, the natural birth. Number two, the new birth. Number three, the numberless birthrights. Number one, the natural birth into an 
earthly kingdom. When you were born, natural birth, you were born into an earthly kingdom. And in the earthly kingdom, quite a lot of heavy, heavy, metallic things, evil happen in the earthly kingdom. And when you have the natural birth, it's the natural birth into an earthly kingdom. Number two, the new birth into the eternal kingdom. When you understand that the natural birth, the one you see, date of birth, that you only came into an earthly natural situation. But then, if things are going to change, if the mark of heaven is going to be upon your life, there must be a new birth, the new birth into the eternal kingdom. Number three, then, the numberless, uncountable birthright in Emmanuel's kingdom. When you come in, and you can come in at any stage, you can come in as a young person, you will. As a middle-aged person, you will. As an old-aged person, you will. And then numberless birthrights will come to you from Emmanuel's kingdom. Let's come to number one. Number one, the natural birth into an earthly kingdom. Look at Job there, chapter 14, verse 1. Job chapter 14, verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. That's the natural birth. You are born by a woman, of course. A man, a woman, boy, girl, anyone born of a woman. It's of a few days, and those few days are full of trouble. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, it says, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one. What's that saying? Adam and Eve, by their sin, by their fall, they became unclean. Daddy unclean. Mommy unclean. They came together and then they brought out number one, Cain. And Cain was that murderer who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean. No one. You see, all the families on earth, all the men, all the women on earth, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone on earth, every father on earth, every mother on earth fell short of the glory of God. And so their offspring, the people, the boys, the girls, the men, the women, the citizens, the people that they brought into the world, into the earthly kingdom, they were also unclean. Who can bring a clean man, a clean woman, a righteous man, a righteous woman, a pure man, a pure woman? Who can bring a perfect man, a perfect woman out of an unclean source, no one. That's why we're told in uh, Psalm 58. Psalm 58, I'm reading from verse 3. It says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. The wicked are estranged from the womb. You know, our psychologists, our scientists, our college people, our people that propound theory and theory and theory, they say it's the environment that corrupts us. 
They say it is the action of other people that corrupt us. They say normally, everyone, every boy, every girl is an innocent person. They say it is when the environment interacts with them, interplays with them, that they have a problem. That's what they say, but they know it's not right. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Before the environmental influence on anyone, and before the influence of society on anyone, he himself is bad enough. Look at this. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Before a child knows any other one that ever told a lie, that child by himself, by herself, will be telling lies. Before a child sees anyone pretending, anyone hypocritical, that child himself, herself, plays hide and seek and place the hypocrite. It is not any other person teaching the fellow. It comes from the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. In Ephesians chapter 2, Reading from verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 3, it says, Among whom also we all, no exception, everyone, somebody high, somebody low, somebody in Africa, somebody in America, somebody in Asia, somebody in Europe, everywhere. It says, Among whom also we all had a conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh. That's the problem. We're born into an earthly kingdom. And that earthly kingdom is corrupt, is sinful, is bad, is evil. We ourselves were evil and sinful by nature. And then our neighbors also, they're sinful and evil. The nature and the neighbors, they come together and now evil bad character, bad character multiplies. And it is the lost in our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Not environment, not because other people influenced us, after all, no other the person's character can force you if you yourself if you are not evil now when a dog barks that doesn't influence you don't bark like the dog why not because you don't want to because that nature is not you and when we call them nocturnal creatures cockroach when they move the way they move, you don't copy them. Why? Because that nature is not in you. When a bad person is doing something, it's the connection with the bad nature in you that makes you to do what you do. That's why he said, among whom also we all had a conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature, not by influence, by nature, not by the environment. We were by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. That's a problem. We were born into an earthly kingdom and we want a change. You will remember when you've done something bad and they caught you and they said, this one, you cannot deny, you did this one. 
and then they brought you to an open shame and then you told yourself never I will never do that again you make resolution and you say I resolve I will never do this kind of thing again after a few days you are back to that naughty thing evil thing bad character why your nature by nature it's like a fish saying i vow i will never swim again that fish cannot fulfill that vow why by nature that fish will swim it's like a bird making a vow resolution this new year I make resolution I will not fly again that bird cannot fulfill that why the nature the same thing a person was the nature of evil the nature of sinfulness you cannot say I vow I resolve I decide by myself I will never do that again my friend you will do it again why that is your nature because we are born into the earthly kingdom but there's another kind of birth you will be born again i didn't hear your answer yeah. i said you'll be born again and when that new birth comes a new nature a new life a new character a new behavior everything in your life everything will turn the right side up it can happen tonight it will happen tonight where are you it's coming your way i said where are you it's of that time we need that new birth. that leads me to point number two point number two the new birth into the eternal kingdom there's a difference between the earthly kingdom and the eternal kingdom the eternal kingdom is the heavenly kingdom the eternal kingdom is the kingdom of god himself and his nature rules and reigns in the eternal kingdom that's why tonight I want to extend the favor of God unto you. That you have been in the dark, sinful, evil, earthly kingdom. I extend the favor of God to you tonight. You will come into the eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. You are coming. And when you come, your life will change. Your nature will change. Impossibilities will become possible in your life in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. The eternal kingdom takes a new birth. And when you are born afresh, born anew, born from above, born by God, a new life, a new nature, a new character because it says that must happen if you are going to see the kingdom of god look at verse 5 in verse 5 jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man of course a woman a boy a girl a person anyone everyone except a man be born of water and 
of the spirit not just water of water and the spirit but now you need to understand the language of jesus because you know every time you hear water you are thinking of the water that comes from the river you want to go to river jordan and take some water there and bath ask those who have gone to river jordan river jerusalem river red sea river holy water and they have taken that river holy water and the bath it's only their skin that was affected it didn't affect their heart their character their soul their mind there was no change the water is referring to here is the water jesus spoke about to the woman at the well when he said if you drink this water that you have come to draw from the well, you will thirst again. The things that you have been doing, man number one, not man number two, man number three, and you are going from place to place, you will thirst for that again. The works of the flesh and the desires of the flesh that have been there, or the desire for alcohol, or the desire for marijuana, or the desire for any evil thing. If you drink this water, whether it's coming from Jerusalem, or coming from Bethel, or coming from Bethlehem, or coming from uh, Sychar, any way it comes from, uh, you will thirst again. But, the water that I will give you. That's the water coming up from heaven. That's the living water, the water of life, the word of the living God that will enter you and penetrate you. You will not thirst anymore. All those things who are thirsty of, I want this, I want that. The Lord will use the water of the word. Everything will vanish away. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, giving birth to you and saying, now, you have been in the earthly kingdom, but now a new birth, a spiritual birth, a birth that is done by the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And when that birth takes place, you are born again. Your heart will be fresh. Your mind will be fresh. Your outlook will be fresh. You'll say, the things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to love, I love them no more. The nightclub that attracted me, no attraction for me anymore. Things are new and different now since I became born again. Tonight is your night. Online friend, God bless you. Thank you for staying there. Thank you for abiding there. It's going to happen to you tonight. That new birth. That new name, that new nature will come upon you tonight in Jesus' name. As the Lord is walking here, over there, over there, everywhere, the Lord will walk in your heart. Because it is only then born of water, the water that comes only from Christ. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And, the, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life. You know, it's not the water from the river. The water of life freely is coming upon your life tonight. And you will enter the kingdom of heaven. I said you'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Look at First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 23 there. 
born anew. The new birth into the eternal kingdom. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again. Do you understand? When we say again, that means something that happened before, the first time. That's the natural birth. But now being born again. This is the new birth, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Born afresh, born anew, by the word of God. That's the water there, that's the water there, which liveth and abideth forever. That means... Being born again did not stop at the time of Nicodemus. Being born again did not stop in the acts of the apostles. Being born again did not stop in the early century. It says the word that gets us born again liveth and abideth forever. Available today. Is coming today. I can picture your life. Your life will be brand new life. I can picture your parents. Anyone that saw you yesterday, when they see you tomorrow, they say, what happened to you? Even your look is new. Your life is new. Your language is new. Your carriage. Everything is new from tonight because we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Are you there? I said, are you there? How, how, how will that Happen. Look at verse 18 in that chapter 1 of 1 Peter. In verse 18, for as much as she know that she was not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, you cannot be born again by silver and gold. Understand me, friend, church man, church woman. I go to church, I do too, and then I pay money, I give money, that's good. The church needs the money to build good church building and put roof on the building so that if we're worshiping and it's raining, we'll be under shelter, that's good. But the silver and the gold, the money and the contribution cannot change your heart, cannot change your life, cannot make you to be born anew. Look at this for as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Look at verse 19. It says, but with the precious blood of Christ. That's how we're born again. With the precious blood of Christ. That's how we're cleansed. That's how we're washed. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, it says we have fellowship with the Father and the Son. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us. Purges us, beautifies us, and removes all those infirmities and evil things. We are cleansed with the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, without blemish and without spot. This is going to be that night, Amen. your own night. Amen. Say, my own night. Amen. When heaven will touch your life. And when 
the blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. Look at uh, First Peter chapter two. I'm reading from verse one. In First Peter chapter two, verse one, wherefore laying aside all malice, laying aside. You understand that? In the morning you wake up in the natural, and then you remove the old clothes and you take a good wash and when you take a good wash after that washing you don't put on the old clothes anymore but you dress new that's what the lord is saying spiritually the old clothes garment of malice of guile of hypocrisy of deception, of lying, of envy, of jealousy, and all evil speaking, laying them aside. As you come to the Lord tonight, you say, Lord, I come. What have you come for? I want this new birth. I want this new life. I want this new character. All right, it will be done. I said it will be done. But you'll do one thing. You lay aside all malice. Now, how do I lay something aside? When I've been doing something and the thing did not prosper me, I've been doing something and the thing did not help my progress. I've been doing something and the thing did not help my relationship with my wife. I've been doing something and the thing did not make me to enjoy my husband. I've been doing something and the thing does not give me a straight, continuous, gradual, happy, healthy, beautiful life. I say enough is enough. Somebody there, enough is enough. Enough is enough. That thing uh, that you've been doing, uh, when you keep malice, the other people too will keep malice with you. When you don't wear a smile, nobody will also smile at you. When you have hatred, and when you have bad, bad, injurious character everybody will be after you that thing does not pay it does not help it's getting us a life that is not happy a sorrowful life if you are a fighting man every day you'll find a fighter and some of them are more clever than you are that thing doesn't pay if what I have been doing the malice, the guile, the hypocrisies, the envies, the evil speaking, if they didn't pay me, I will lay them aside. That's what you do tonight. I'm talking to you. I said that is what you do tonight. And then look at verse 2 there. In verse 2, as newborn babes, as newborn babes, when you lay all those things aside, you'll be born afresh. New life, new birth, new character, new enjoyment, because now you'll be born into the kingdom of God. New birth into the eternal kingdom. I come to point number three now. Point number three, the numberless birthrights in Emmanuel's kingdom. The numberless, the uncountable, the innumerable, the so many benefits and advantages of the new birth as we come into Emmanuel's kingdom. You will not remain in the evil kingdom. You will not remain in the dark kingdom. 
making me good better. Amen. You will not remain in an occultic kingdom. You will not remain in an idolatrous kingdom. Those are the earthly kingdoms. They hurt people. They harm people. They injure people. They destroy people. And they turn people's lives upside down. Your life will not remain upside down. Your life will come right side up. My life will come right side up. Confirmed in Jesus' name. Now, what are the birthrights? What are the privileges? What are the blessings? What are the benefits of the birthright that we have as we come to the Lord? Numberless birthrights in Emmanuel's kingdom. Look at Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, giving thanks unto the Father because it's made us partakers. You will not be an onlooker. You will not be a spectator. As you come tonight, you will possess. I will possess. You will be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Look at verse 13. There's something here. Verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? It's when you come to the Lord. It's when you have the new birth. Different from the natural birth is then he will deliver you from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The dear son is called Emmanuel. That's why we we'll say this is the benefit, the birthright, numberless. For those who come to Emmanuel's kingdom. And now it says it will deliver you from the power of darkness. Give me another good amen. amen. Now, when somebody says that this restaurant is very good. You say, how do you know? Is it because of the sign what they put there? Good restaurant? You say no. That, that's where I eat. Look at me. And the evidence that that thing I'm recommending to you is good is that you can see it on me. Since I started with the menu of that restaurant. All that I suffered before, the early morning blue, and all those things, everything vanished away, and I cannot exchange that restaurant for any other. That recommendation is coming from something practical. The same thing when you come to Emmanuel's kingdom. I can tell you what happens in Emmanuel's kingdom. Every power of darkness in your life will be cancelled in Jesus' name. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. All your sins are forgiven tonight. That's why you are going to rejoice. 
I'm going to rejoice with you. I will hear your testimony. Psalm 103, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1. Here yeah, it tells us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3 now, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. He's waiting for you tonight. All your iniquities, all your sins, every bad thing you have done because of the natural birth in the earthly kingdom. Your nature, your life, your behavior, your character, every evil thing that Lord will forgive you tonight. Did you hear? Forgiveness from heaven. Did you hear? Forgiveness from the Father. Did you hear? Forgiveness with total freedom. Congratulations. Who oh, forgiveth all thine iniquities. Look at the second part. Who oh, healeth all thy diseases. How many of your diseases will he heal tonight? <laughs> Blind eyes will open. The lame will rise up and walk. And those who are infirm, impotent, and weak, and some parts of the body have died off and could not function again. New life, dynamic life, healthy life will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Tumor will vanish away from your body. And all those evil things that make you less than a complete human being, everything will be taken away tonight. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Your night has come. Your chance has come. Two things. Number one, he forgives all your iniquities. Number two, he heals all your diseases. Let's have number one, eyes closed and heads bowed. The Lord wants to take you out of the earthly kingdom and he wants to bring you to the eternal kingdom it's about eyes closed you want that translation you want that transfer you want the lord himself to give you the new birth right now beyond the natural birth wherever you are I know you've been waiting for this time. Raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you. God bless you. There's a new birth tonight. There's a new life tonight. All your sins will be forgiven. Online, friend, you know I'm talking to you. And you know that this is your time for you to have this new birth. And wherever you are over there, in any country, in any congregation, anywhere you are, raise up your hand right there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, everyone, as you are raising up your hand, I want you to stand up. Stand up wherever you are. You see, to forgive all my sins, to change my life, and to give me a new birth. I want it now. Raise up your hand. Remember, it's for the young, it's for the old, it's for everyone. God bless you. We're going to pray now. And in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the Lord will give you that new birth. Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus.